Hey, Seth David here from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated and the brand spanking new SethDavid.com bringing to you another spectacular screencast. This time we're talking about QuickBooks Online for real estate, brokers and agents, how to record a sale. Give me a call at 866-945-8070 for information about our private training and business management services for real estate brokers and agents. Last time we talked about how to set up your listing in QuickBooks Online. And that was based on going over to the customer area, setting up your customer as a customer, and setting up the listing as a sub-customer within that customer, just like you see here. Now before we get into the actual sale, I want to show you a couple of other things that can be really useful when you have a listing that you're trying to track in QuickBooks Online. The notes area here, for example, is a great place to put the listing price. and just type it in there. You can hit the tab key when you're done or just click anywhere else away on the screen. And it's nice to have that information right there. Notice here we're looking at the transaction list. If I click over here, we can see the customer details if you haven't already. And notice my note is down here, right? But if you haven't already, you can go in and you can fill in other information like their email, their phone number. It's handy to have that information here, even though you might have a CRM that handles that. Or better yet, use a CRM that syncs to QuickBooks Online, and then you've got the best of all worlds. So now we're ready to record the sale. And before you record the sale, especially since this might be your first sale that you're recording in QuickBooks Online, we'll need to make sure that you have a couple of things in place on the books. So if I go over here to Transactions and go to the Chart of Accounts, I want to scroll down to the income section and make sure that I've got a commissions income account. Because remember, as broker or agent, that's the nature of your income. You're not earning the money that the house sold for. You're getting a commission based on what the house sold for. And that's going to be the real key to how to record this, which I'm going to show you in less than 60 seconds. The other thing you're going to want to check is up here in the gear icon in your lists, uh, products and services. And we want to make sure that we have something like real estate sales. So let's create that. So I'll choose a new service item. We'll call it real estate sales. Okay, and down here, it goes to commissions, commission income. Notice I start typing it, it comes up, then I can select it from the list and save and close. And there it is, real estate sales going to commissions income. So now let's go back to customers. I always like to be sort of in the customer that I'm working on when I'm doing things like this. And we'll create a new invoice. Now why an invoice and not a sales receipt? The answer is very simple. An invoice will allow you to track the sale date based on the invoice date, where the payment date might be much later, right? The listing closes, everything goes into escrow, it could be 30 days before you see your money. So, first we're going to choose the customer which again is the sub-customer that we created. And be careful if it's asking you to create a new customer. It means something went wrong when you typed it. So uh, let's cancel this and try that again. I start typing my sevens and there it is. And it comes up and don't really need to worry too much about the email. You're not gonna send this invoice to anybody. It's just to capture the transaction. The uh, invoice date would be the sale date. Over here in product or services, we choose real estate sales. Now here's the tricky part. So the quantity, remember I said the listing, we're going to say it was sold for the full listing price, $1,500,000. So you're going to put that amount, the selling amount, in the quantity column because our commission is based on that. So this way, let's say our commission is 5%. Then we just put 5% for the rate, or 0 0.05. And there's our commission, $75,000 based on a 5% commission on a $1,500,000 sale. You can use division or class to describe if let's say you deal with both residential and commercial real estate that would be one good example of where you could use either one of these it's just a different way of breaking up your transactions so you could report on them later based on that that is it my friends once i record this we're going to say save and close and it's warning me that it's missing a class i'll save it anyway i could even go in here and say closing date 3, 10, 16. Okay, just so I have that information there. Uh, in future videos, we can get into how to set up custom fields where you can actually pull that information into a report. But now, let's speaking of reports, let's look at a profit and loss. 
And there it is, my commission income for 75000 Next time, what we're going to do is we're going to look at what's involved when we have an agent who we have to pay a commission to. So we earn the 75000 We pay the agent a share of this commission. We're going to see how to get that set up and what that all looks like. As always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, please post them below wherever you happen to be watching this, whether it's on YouTube or check the description on YouTube for a link back to the original blog post. Either way, wherever you post it, I'll get notified and I'll get back to you maybe even with a follow-up video answer, if not at the very least with a direct answer to your questions and comments. And once again, if you'd like more direct help and information, or if you'd like to inquire about our business management services for real estate brokers and agents, give us a call at 866-945-8070.